As we've talked about previously on this channel, the Dead Sea Scrolls are some of the greatest evidence that we have for the reliability and authenticity of the scriptures. These are thousands of years old and give us clear proof that the scriptures that we have today are very, very accurate. But what if I told you that there are scriptures that are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years older than the Dead Sea Scrolls that have been found in Jerusalem? Well, let's talk about that today. Not many people know this, but in the Hanam Valley in Jerusalem, there have been found scriptures that are the oldest copies of scriptures we have ever found to date. And these are so unique in so many ways. This archeological find gives us a great glimpse into how the ancient Jews interacted with scripture and how they had a reverence for it overall. First of all, let's talk about the location in which these scrolls were found. These are called the Ketef Hinnom scrolls. Ketef meaning shoulder and Hinnom being a location in Jerusalem, the Hinnom Valley to be more exact. And so this is where these were found. There was an excavation that was going on in this area and several tombs were found specifically in this location. You can imagine it almost like a giant graveyard here. Now, dozens of tombs were actually found in this location. However, since Jerusalem has been changed hands so many times, there's nothing of value that was found basically in any of these tombs, leaving us to go to tomb number 25. As all of the archeologists are searching this area to find anything of value, they're not finding much because all of these tombs have been raided previously by people coming through so all that was left was basically bones or things that weren't really of any value or significance for research however one of the tombs was a little bit different as we come to tomb 25 we see that the floor of this tomb has some dirt and rocks it didn't really seem like anything significant whatsoever however during this archaeological dig there was a group of children from an archaeology club that wanted to help with this excavation and one of them in particular found something really interesting with tomb number 25 you see, these tombs are separated into two separate parts, the top portion being the burial portion where they would allow bodies to decompose until they were just bones. Then once those bodies were decomposed, they would take them and any valuables along with the body and put them in what's called the repository beneath the tomb. This is a lower section where they held all the bones and all the valuables for an extended amount of time. These tombs would be used generationally over and over and over again. So much so that in this specific tomb, number 25, there were over 95 individual people bones found in this tomb showing that this had been used for a long time generationally but even though the other archaeologists didn't really find anything in tomb 25 this child was able to go in and use his tools to dig further into the bottom of the tomb revealing a false floor that was in the bottom of this tomb really insane they determined that the ceiling of the repository actually shed off at one point falling and creating a false floor covering all of the earliest oldest valuables that were in this repository so making the perfect situation for any archaeologist to come and find it however at first this confused not only the archaeologists but also the the tomb robbers that came earlier on so this created the perfect scenario for us to find them now. As this child broke into the false floor and probably did a bunch of things that archaeologists aren't supposed to do, they eventually got all the archaeologists over here and started digging through all of the contents of the repository. And what they found is pretty, pretty cool. The first thing they found is a ton of pottery, which is a very common thing to find in archaeological digs all over Israel and all over the world. But this is great because it allows us to more accurately show the time period in which all all of this took place which is really really cool but of course the crown jewel of the findings that were in this repository was the Ketef Hinnom silver scrolls in the very back corner meaning it's one of the oldest things in this repository is the Ketef Hinnom silver scrolls scrolls that are made completely of silver just as the name suggests and they're wrapped around each other about six times this is something that we have not found before. And the findings get even more interesting as we continue on. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, it would really help us out if you would subscribe to the channel or check out some of the other stuff that we have on the Snipe Life. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Eventually, the scientists and archaeologists are able to take out these silver scrolls and very carefully open them up to be able to read them. And on them is microscopic lettering. Some of these letters of ancient Hebrew are only a few millimeters tall which is an insane feat for that time to be inscribed onto silver scrolls. It's even pretty difficult for us to read them today. So the archeologists use advanced imaging techniques and even electron microscopy in order to really look at these scrolls to determine what they say. And the first word that the archeologist was able to decipher when looking at these scrolls was yod Hey vav Hey, or in other words, Yahweh. 
the name of God. Just as we spoke about when we talked about the Lachish letters, it's a very similar form of writing. The same ancient Hebrew during the same time period, actually. So these are linked together in some way, just in different locations. The letters were in Lachish, and the new scrolls are found in Jerusalem. But during the same period of Jeremiah, the same period right before the Babylonian conquest. But this is really significant. Knowing that this is the only surviving thing from this time period in Jerusalem that has the name of God on it is so huge. And the fact that it was buried with someone shows us the reverence and the importance that they had on this material altogether. So what did it actually say? And this is where my mind gets blown every single time. In the two scrolls that were found in this repository are written two slightly different versions of something that we know very, very well. From Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 and 26, we read this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, some words in the earlier part of the scroll are deteriorated beyond recognition. However, the later part of the scroll is very much readable, and here's what it says. May Yahweh bless you, and may he keep you. May Yahweh make his face shine. And of course, we're missing a couple words there, but listen to what's on the second scroll as well. May bless you, Yahweh, keep you. Make shine, Yahweh, his face upon you and grant you peace. So someone during the 6th or 7th century BC decided that they wanted to be buried with these verses particularly in mind. The prayers and the words that they covered themselves with in life, most likely from Numbers, the same book that we read from today. It's so interesting and it's so human, something that we would do today, something that someone would have inscribed on the inside of their coffin or something that they would want to be buried with. And just like the Dead Sea Scrolls, while these aren't full transcriptions of the Bible or scriptural verses, there are pieces of them that show us the more realistic version, day-to-day -day version of what people would interact with when they talk about scriptures. Just the fact that these exist at all is so crazy. And imagine how many more of these would have existed if these tombs hadn't been pillaged. And yet, God kept a remnant here. So the finding of the Ketef Hinnom scroll should bolster your faith. It should show you that the Bible that you're reading is not only accurate, but it's been around for thousands and thousands of years. Something that can be proved and something that can be shown by this evidence over and over again. Other books we don't question, but for some reason the world continually questions the authenticity and reality of the scriptures, of our Bible, of the word of God. And yet, there are more and more and more evidences that keep on popping up, that keep on being found. So let this bolster you and remember that the word of God is true. It's inerrant. And it's how he wants to speak with you. So what are your thoughts on the Ketef Hinnom scrolls? Do you have anything to add in the comments down below? I'd love to hear it. And if you haven't seen our video on the Lachish letters, go ahead and check that out right here. I'm sure you'll love it.